My landlord raised my rent, so I had to sort through my game collection to sell some stuff. Yeah, how's that for the start of a video? I'm an adult. Collecting has not been my top concern for quite a while at this point. Getting my bachelor's and transing my gender felt like better priorities, but I still do have some affinity for my old hobby. In fact, I've been working on a follow-up to some videos I originally made in 2015, and it sent me down quite a few interesting rabbit holes. I now have a decent little international shelf for games that were released in obscure regions. My ultimate goal is to have the somehow real Brazilian Portuguese version of South Park for the Nintendo 64, but until then I have thoroughly enjoyed the Korean version of Finding Nemo, the Indonesian version of Wave Race 64, the French-Canadian version of Kirby's Adventure, and both Taiwanese versions of Super Mario 64. However, none of these games are why I'm making this video. When browsing Sega Retro deep into the night a few months ago, as you do, I happened upon this really well-made article on Zihu about the history of video games in Taiwan. Before you ask, I don't know any Mandarin, but I would like to learn Mandarin, and until that day comes, I have a friend who does speak Mandarin, and she told me Microsoft Edge did a good enough job machine translating into English. As such, I feel confident directly quoting the AI overlords at Microsoft. The article reads, since 1991, in order to open up to the Chinese game market for MD consoles, Sega has officially released two Chinese traditional genuine games in Hong Kong and Taiwan, namely Three Kingdoms Gone with the Wind and Julius Caesar, formerly known as Caesar Ambition in Japan. But perhaps suffering from the piracy-ridden market, Sega has basically not released an official Chinese traditional version of the game since then. That's obviously very clunky, but it gets across an interesting point. There are traditional Chinese localizations of Mega Drive games. With some sleuthing on Chinese Wikipedia, I figured out that Three Kingdoms Gone with the Wind is better known to us as Sengyokuchi Retsuden Ranse no Eutachi. I think. It's a first-party Sega game, and despite my first impression, it has no relation to Koei's Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It's just one of the surprisingly plentiful Mega Drive strategy games that never got released in English. Either way, the ROM for it has apparently been right under my nose for several years. I always assumed this was a Chinese bootleg based on the name, but nope. In true Angloid fashion, the person who dumped this ROM just conflated the PRC with the ROC. After all, it's not like Chinese Wikipedia exists or anything. Furthermore, it is as official as any other Mega Drive game you've played. It's pretty high quality, it has a fucking banger soundtrack, and it's pretty easy to find on eBay. It just so happens to be in traditional Chinese. The world record speedrunner for this game is even from Taiwan. Pretty cool. The other game, however, is much more obscure. Julius Caesar is actually Warrior of Rome from Micronet. This game was released in America, and I even owned a copy of it back in like 2020. Warrior of Rome 2 is a pretty fun game in my opinion, but the original leaves a lot to be desired. It has really cool cutscenes, but that's about its only saving grace. It's a Micronet game with a lot of Micronet jank. Either way, it was apparently released in Taiwan, so I had to own it. I found a copy on Route 10 for less than $20, but, uh... I live in Kansas. You need a Taiwanese ID to buy from this website, so I had to resort to eBay. Thankfully, there was a copy on eBay from Germany for like a 500% markup, so I bought it. Easiest decision of my life. As you can tell, it has different squiggly lines from your granny's copy of Warrior of Rome, so that makes me better than you. Now all I need to do is scour the internet for more information about this game and oh. 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 Apparently I'm sitting on lost media. In all my years of totally not illegally downloading ROMs because stealing 30-year-old intellectual property from massive corporations is morally wrong and you should never do it, I've only learned of a few retail games rare enough to be undumped. There are definitely a few out there, and I've lived long enough to see a lot of them preserved, but they're usually super obscure. I'm not shocked that Pyramid Adventures for the Philips CDI was lost until 2019, but the Mega Drive is like... Normal! In a post Outback Joey world, we're not supposed to have undumped games anymore. We're not talking about Albanian Spongebob, we're talking about an official localization of an official game on a mainstream console for one of the biggest tech markets in the world. Why am I the only English-speaking person who cares? I know I'm autistic, but I like to pretend my priorities are normal. Fortunately, the aforementioned Jihu article does shed a tiny bit of additional light on what exactly happened here. Apparently, the localization for this game is terrible. Like, it's zero wing levels of incomprehensibility. It's described as, quote, a thankless sandwich between Taiwanese style and that outside of Taiwan, unquote, and to be fair, who could blame them? This issue probably amounts to the fact that this game was also released in British Hong Kong, where Cantonese is the lingua franca. Chinese dialects are almost always mutually unintelligible, but the traditional and simplified Chinese writing scripts somewhat bridge that gap, albeit with a lot of imprecision. 
Given that Taiwan and Hong Kong both use the traditional Chinese script for writing their respective languages, the team working on this blatantly peripheral project probably conglomerated the two for the sake of time. By team, I of course mean one person named Ye Chen according to the game's credits. I don't know who this person is. I tried looking them up on LinkedIn, but I couldn't find anyone who matched the description of working at Micronet in 1991. I also tried looking on Micronet's website, which is, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's got character, I'll say that much. They might be offline, they might be dead, or they might be yet another victim in the long lineage of Japanese video game companies that refuse to credit their developers under anything but a pseudonym. I wish I knew. Either way, this release is a truly interesting anomaly. Sengu Kyuchi Retuden makes sense. It's literally a game about one of China's four great classical novels. It would obviously appeal to an audience that can read traditional Chinese, but Warrior of Rome is none of those things. It's a mediocre RPG that's explicitly about the Roman Empire, and this game wasn't even released in Europe! It was literally available everywhere except for where it ought to be! Also, the user interface in this version is still in English. The Japanese version has a Japanese user interface with Japanese cutscenes, the American version has an English user interface with English cutscenes, but the Taiwanese version has an English user interface with traditional Chinese cutscenes? I have to imagine this is a consequence of storage limitations. After all, there are over 7,000 traditional Chinese characters with an unholy spectrum of complexity, but that never stopped domestic Taiwanese Mega Drive games from being perfectly playable. There are like 80 Mega Drive games that were developed in Taiwan, and a lot of them are far more elaborate than Warrior of Rome. Beggar Prince, Legend of Wukong, Brave Battle Saga, and Canon are all sprawling 50 plus hour long RPGs, and unlike Warrior of Rome, they were all made without official Mega Drive development kits. Plus, if storage space was really such an issue, why prioritize the cutscenes? Aren't they marginally less important than one's ability to play the game itself? I'm gonna have to stop myself here. For the finer details of this localization, I must implore everyone watching this to speak to actual Taiwanese people. I don't personally understand the priorities that went into making this game, but that does not mean I'm here to disparage it. This is an absolute cornerstone of weird video game bullshit that makes absolutely no sense, and I love it for that. In terms of the expectations I had for it being my exact brand of insanity that only retro video games could satiate, Warrior of Rome does not disappoint. I'm glad I own it, and I wish somebody would have shown it to me sooner. If only I could make it easier for future generations who love what I love to ogle at how weird it is. If only. <clears throat> I would never endorse emulation, but if you were to hypothetically go to archive.org and search for this game, you might happen to notice that some evil copyright thief uploaded nice, high-quality scans of this game's box art and manual. All 55 pages of it, because yeah, somebody had to translate a truly ridiculous amount of text for something that only I know about. As for the ROM itself, I don't have the means to dump it right now. Like I said, my landlord raised my rent, so I'm very broke at the moment. Hey, hey, stop staring at my Atari Jaguar! That has nothing to do with anything! Besides, it looks like some evil, dirty, intellectual property violating scoundrel also uploaded the ROM to archive.org. I wonder who could be so nefarious as to commit such an act of impudence. Couldn't be me. No way. I would never want to preserve 50% of the Mega Drive's Taiwanese library, where even is Taiwan on the map anyway? Whatever the case may be, I hope they have a sexy digital affairs minister. Follow me on Beely Beely for some new Cytus content. Goodbye! <la�><笑><笑>我最近因为我想很多很多认识的就是 Angry Gamer 對